Hi, um, thank you for tuning in. Um, and this is another one of our services here at Alluvium, the church that we're in right now. And I wanted to talk a little bit more about what we intend to do here and the way that we intend to do it. And uh, this is Blaine, by the way, he's on our board of directors Hi. as well. And uh, he's gonna be chatting more and kind of underscoring some of the things that I'm, I'm gonna say right now. So we got a really interesting email and it went into a lot of some of the indictments of judo Christianity as a structure and as a as a framework for faith and for religion. And that led to some very interesting discussions which happened here. And I don't want to recap all those because some of those points that were made in the email, I think were made well and we received the email from somebody else, but it was an interesting conversation. And we are going to have the author of that email to have a further discussion with us. But one of the things that I did want to talk about today is who we are and what we're all about. And the point of that we're going to emphasize today is the three D's that we want to avoid. And I think these three D's are damaging and detrimental to a lot of institutionalized religious endeavors. And that's and that insight is one of the things that I think makes us unique as a religious structure. So those three D's are um, dogma, doctrine, and denomination. So there are two main advantages from getting for getting rid of any framework of dogma, doctrine, and denomination. Um, so one of those advantages is that it enables you to connect with people in a way that's much more open. But I think a second more important uh, reason to get rid of those, those, um, those that, that kind of framework of dogma, doctrine, and denomination as the basis of your religion is really that it enables you to start kind of from a, a clean slate. And so you don't have to worry about what, what mythology has existed before you. You can kind of approach things from the standpoint of how can you reinvent spirituality without a framework that's bogged down by a lot of indictments and by a, a lot of negativity. So um, I'm gonna turn it over to Blaine. I, I want him to add some stuff about Alluvium, what we're about why we avoid the three Ds and what we hope to accomplish in terms of fostering spirituality and spiritual actualization. So this is Blaine. Hello everybody, as I said, I'm Blaine. And I think here a lot of what we're just trying to do is to not turn anybody away by something that they believe or tell them that they're wrong in the way that they believe or, or the way that they live their life, you know? Uh, we want to send positive vibes to everybody and express ourselves through music, through spoken word, through poem, and sitting around in a circle and having a church service where we just sit around in a circle and kind of pass the word around and we talk about things. And then we get a lot of different perspectives of, of things and it opens up our minds to maybe something that we haven't seen before, you know? And I think that that's a huge part of it. It's something that I've looked for for a long time because I don't feel like I fit into the normal church. I feel like I feel like I'm judged upon, and that's what I like about being here. Is that we're not judging anybody, and we're not saying that the way you believe is right or wrong, or the way we believe is right or wrong. And we're open to suggestions for sure. I think that's well said, and I'm glad that you feel open here, Blaine. And I think we are generally trying to create a sense of openness and. I think that's that's another thing that you know even though in these videos i end up doing a lot of the talking when we do do our church service what we do is um we we open it up to the whole floor and we uh and this is gomez right here by the way um but yeah so we do open it up to the group and we keep things very open and we give everyone a chance to discuss so um one of the other things that we're about which is kind of another gets into like how we avoid the three d's is we do believe that there's some intersectionality and overlap in religion and science and philosophy. So that's another thing that I do want to touch upon at least briefly. And I think another advantage to getting rid of the three Ds is um, that you can really get to the, the root of what spirituality and religion are. And I'll let uh, Blaine talk about this more again in a second, but I think sort of the, the core questions of any any person that comes into existence who's very thoughtful and introspective are, why am I here? What is this universe around me and how is it comprised? What is it made of? How did the universe get here? How did I get here? And how is the universe gonna end? 
So I think those questions of, you know, cosmogony, the origin of the universe, eschatology, the ultimate fate of the universe, are really central questions to religion and spirituality. And they're questions that you should be asking yourself, no matter what religion you are, no matter what faith, what belief system you have, or even or if you don't, thereof. or yeah, or even if you don't have one, we still, as spiritual, insightful, intelligent, introspective beings, I'm wonder doing a lot of where we come from. We still wonder where we come from. I'm doing a lot of alliteration today. Yeah. I don't know if that's <laughs> that's a, a theme necessarily, but so I like that what we try to get at here is we try to not only say, well, you know, there are actually insights in science from where the universe came from. There are actually insights from science as to how the universe is ultimately going to end. But I think what we do here, what we hope to do, what we endeavor to do, is to take it one step further and say, now that science is starting to unravel and gain insight into some different facets of the universe, what does that say about our, ourselves? What does it say about who we are you know, philosophically and who we are spiritually? So I think that's another advantage of getting rid of you know, the three Ds is, that you can really get to the core of why religions came into existence. And that core of why religions came to be is to ask questions. And those questions are being asked and answered by sciences as well. But I think when you kind of holistically look at everything and you say, what does that mean to me? And what does it mean to me as a spiritual being specifically? You, you can start fresh with some interesting answers to those questions based on new scientific revelations that are always emerging. And also science doesn't answer everything. A lot of unanswered questions in science, you know? Yeah. Just... We had a really nice conversation about the Big Bang Theory um, last week. And a, a lot of common misconceptions about the Big Bang Theory. So, you know, most scientists don't actually adhere to the Big Bang Theory as a complete explanation of why the universe came into existence. And there's actually a lot of different flaws with the Big Bang Theory itself. Like, one of the flaws is that an explosion, like a Big Bang, should create a very messy, scattered universe with some very dense pockets and some very open pockets. So, and the universe is strikingly, when you look at the cosmic microwave background radiation, the universe is really strikingly smooth and very, very uniform. So the way that um, paradox was reconciled was by Alan Guth of MIT in I think the 1980s or 1990s when he came up with his paradigm of inflationary cosmology. And now actually most scientists actually do adhere to inflationary cosmology as a modification of the Big Bang, which basically the inflationary cosmology corollary to the Big Bang is that the universe expanded rapidly, but it was a very controlled brief expansion where it rapidly increased in size. And then the rest of the expansion of the universe was driven by dark energy. But it's a very, it's an interesting idea it's an idea that sort of uh, reconciles some of the mathematical problems with the Big Bang as it was initially conceived. But at the same time, there's not a lot of support for inflationary, inflationary cosmology to the extent that there's not a, a lot of justification of why that period of universal expansion began. And so that's something scientists don't have the answers for. But I think when you look back at the Big Bang, at inflationary cosmology, at other different theories of the or, of the origin of the universe, um, then you know it it it's interesting to not only talk about them but use that as a mirror for how you see yourself and how you see your role in the universe. Um, and there are competing ideas of how the universe came into existence that are just as scientifically consistent as the Big Bang, like the ekpyrotic theory of the universe, which is this theory that there are different sort of membranes of reality and that these membranes kind of expand and contract and smash into each other. And it was one of these collision events that gave rise to the universe. So it's a very interesting idea. And so it's not just the, the bifurcated conceptions of Big Bang or intelligent design. There are a lot of other different explanations. And as we hone and refine our understanding of how the universe came into existence, we can you know, use that as a, as a mirror to think about ourselves. And science doesn't have all the answers. And philosophy doesn't have all the answers, but I think if you're going to be a spiritually holistic person, you need to take some of those revelations and, and just kind of think about them and ponder them. And we had a really interesting discussion about it. And I think everyone who was here last week uh, learned a lot about what the scientific consensus understanding is of the Big Bang, actually. Yeah. Any thoughts on that?
Do you believe in the ekpyrotic theory, Lane, or do you believe in inflationary cosmology I, or the Big Bang? I just don't know. I, that's my, I just don't know. You know what I mean? I don't, I try, I just try to live life the best that I can and not harm people and, and be all right with not knowing exactly how I got here or how we all got here or, but knowing that I play a big part in where we're going, you know? And so does everybody else. Well, anyways, um, that was, uh, I'm gonna give you some closing thoughts and then I'll turn it over to Blaine to give some closing thoughts. But that was just some of the things that we talked about last week and some of the things that we hope to talk about at our wider services tonight. And just an idea of some of the things that we talk about here at Alluvium. And we do have a lot of um, articulated ideas about all these different things and uh, different ways to approach them. And I think because we're not dogmatic or doctrinal or entrenched by any denomination, we've been able here to have some really interesting conversations with people who have sort of uh, idiosyncratic or atypical or various revolutionary ideas about how the universe came to exist. So thanks very, very much for tuning in. Um, I, those are my parting words and I'm gonna turn it over to Blaine for some of his parting words as well. Um, I would just like to say that uh, uh, one thing, we're having an open session tonight at 7 o'clock, so if you're in the area and you want to stop by here, come by here and share with some spoken word. If you want to play a song, if you want to give us a poem, if you've got anything you have you want to share, if you want to talk about how we got here, we can sit around and talk about it and just have a good time tonight and everybody gather and... Everybody stay peaceful, man, and we should all get along. We should all try to get along. And the only hard rules that we have for the open mic is you do have to figure out where the universe came from. You have to figure that out by 7 o'clock tonight. <laughs> yeah. And it has to be a complete framework. <laughs> yeah. Okay, no, thanks, everyone, for tuning in, and we'll see you tonight at 7 o'clock, and we'll see you here once a week, every week, for our, our services. Thanks yes, for guys. tuning in.